Hello, welcome or welcome back. Recently, I was asked for a simple Excel budget. And if you don't know by now, I love Excel. So this one's a pretty easy video for me. I do also use Every Dollar for budgeting, the app Every Dollar, as well as the Mint app for budgeting, but I also use an Excel budget and I wanted to share with you how you can put together a quick budget that is simple and I feel will meet your needs for budgeting in Excel. So I'm gonna get right to it. I'm using Excel 2019 and what I've done is started a new workbook. So what I'm gonna do is show you step by step, month over month, how to create this easy budget. And so if you're looking at this and you're like, oh my goodness, if I have to do that every month, you don't. That's the wonderful thing about Excel. You won't have to follow each of these steps month over month, the same top to bottom. At the end of the video, I'm gonna show you how you can create the next month and the next month, so on and so forth, really easily in Excel. What I like to start out by doing with just about any document that I start out with that is to title it and save it. So I have titled mine Budget 2019. You'll want to save it in a quick and easy location. I save mine on my desktop where it's really easy to get to. And so again, it is titled Budget 2019. And when we open it up, we have this blank worksheet. And this first one is titled Sheet 1. So that's pretty customary. So normally what I would do is relabel this worksheet. So of course, this one, if we were gonna start in this month, October 2019, we could start here. If we had started at the beginning of the month, we would retitle this January. So all I did was double click in January. Okay, then you can hit this arrow to add another sheet, double click February, double click March, so on and so forth. So if you are gonna make one for the new year, you can certainly do it that way. But what we're gonna do is go ahead and start with October's. And then again, before the end of this video, I will show you how to make November's quick and easy. So what we'll do is add another sheet and make this October. I normally align my budget by my paychecks. What bills are due within which paycheck. So I start out at the top here by listing out my paydays. I get paid two times a month. So my paydays for October are on the 4th and the 18th. So I list that out first because I want to keep in mind when things need to be paid, right? And what bills need to be paid within which pay periods. Okay, so then starting here, I start to list out my bills. So again, I like to list my bills out by the date they're due. So I'll enter a header that says date, one that says bill, one that says amount, and then this final one is just for notes, confirmation numbers, so on and so forth. and we can make this a little bit nicer. I'm just highlighting here, right click, column width, and make that 17. So they look a little more uniform. I also want these to look a lot more like headers. So I'm gonna highlight and make them bold, underline them, and then also center them. So you can see what I'm doing here. I've made the screen a little bit smaller to you I have selected the bold here, so we'll highlight these to make them more like headers. Bold, underline, center. And then I'm actually going to hit this A with the arrow up to increase the font size just a little bit, just to make them more apparently headers. Okay, so let's maximize this again because I want you to be able to see everything. Okay, and then I'll start adding in my bills. So normally my first one up is my mortgage, so 10-1. So that means October 1st. I'm tabbing over using the tab on my keyboard, but you can also just select in that next field. The bill name, 
typing in Mr. Cooper, the amount, and then any notes or confirmation numbers. And so this just helps when I schedule the bill or if I have any notes as to whether it's an auto payment or I'd like to list out a confirmation number. So next I'm going to add my next bill due. It's actually on the first as well. And that's my American Express. That amount is 36. And you can see here some differences here. These aren't dollar amounts. I like to clean that up. So what I'm going to do is highlight those. We're going to go back again to that smaller screen and make these dollars. So it looks pretty uniform. So here, the accounting number format is the dollar. And you saw how that made a change. Okay, now of course you won't be doing all this jumping back and forth. This is something I'm doing to be able to screen share with you. I want this view of it to be as large as possible, but I want you to be able to see all the changes I'm making in the toolbar up top as well. So let's see here, let's add a couple others. Spectrum Internet, $45. Okay, and I'm just gonna pop in a few more here. This Boost Mobile is an automatic payment, so I'll just make that note so I know that it's just scheduled to come on out whenever the due date occurs. Let's see here. Okay, now that I've added in a few others, of course you'll wanna list out as many bills as you have. I wanna show you a couple other features that I think are helpful in an Excel budget. One thing, again, that I really, really like about Excel budgeting is that you have more leeway for mistakes. So say I had listed out all of these bills and I forgot that I have a debt actually due on the 10th that I didn't add. So what you can do here is just quickly insert a row between these two and add that amount. So I'm just gonna click on that eight because I'm gonna add it above this row. So I right click insert and you can see it adds a row there. If there was a debt, say there was a bill listed here that you no longer have to pay, say you paid something off and this row was populated and you no longer need it, then if say something was in here, we'll add something stuff and say that was in there and you no longer need it, again, you can highlight that entire row, right click and delete and it'll delete that entire row. So those are quick and easy ways to add and remove rows from Excel that just makes Excel so much more customizable. So after we've added our bills, these are our expenses. We want to add in our income, obviously. So what I like to do is just use this section over here to add in some pieces of income. Now, if you're like me, most of my income comes from one source, my job. What I'm gonna do is just add something here that says income. Over here, I want to list out the sources of income in case there's actually more than one source. So I'm just gonna scroll over a little bit and say you have your regular salaried income of say 3,500 a month. And I'll just make a note that that is salary. And then say maybe you have a side gig that's about 500 a month. 
So I'll make a note that that side gig, say you're averaging about $50 in eBay sales. All of that is added in to your income. What I'm gonna do here is insert a quick formula to add each of these incomes into one. And so essentially it's going to be, and I'm gonna move this up just a little bit so you can see this bar. You'll see me adding this formula and you can see what it is here for quick reference. So here I am going to add an equal sign and this is gonna be the sum or the addition of each of these. So I added a sum equals sum parentheses, and then I just hovered over and highlighted those three fields, which represents I1 through I3. And there you go. The total of these three fields is $4050. $4,050. That's a quick and easy sum. So you can see it's also listed here, equal sum there. So I'm just readjusting this here. So then I am going to just leave that there. If in most cases you just have the one salary and want to list that, you don't have to do all that. You can just add income and then the amount. So I showed you how to add a formula here to add these up. Why don't we add a formula to add up our bill amounts as well? I'm just gonna scroll back over. And down here under column C for amount, we are going to add the total of everything, every bill amount we're adding here. So it's that same formula, equals sum and open parenthesis. And then we're going to highlight all of the fields up until this field and close the parenthesis. And you can see that gives us the sum of everything we're adding there. So say we continue to add bills. Let's see, we have on the 23rd, we have Duke. And once I hit enter, you will see this amount down here reflect in addition of 132.16. So enter, and you see how that's easily, easily added for you? I love it. So then let's see, let's add one more. That's Piedmont. Okay, and it's just adding up everything for us. Let's see, anything else we wanna add for now? I think this looks pretty good. So one thing that you can do along the way within each week or pay period. Or what I normally do is just over the month is make sure you're also accounting for your gas, groceries, your giving, restaurants. And so I'm gonna show you how I add that at the bottom. So there's no date for those, but what I have them listed as is say a bill. So giving is one category, groceries, I split restaurants out. <laughs> and then auto gas. Okay, so giving is the 10%. And so you can see because I'm adding that amount to this column where this formula includes the addition of everything in this column it's being added to my monthly amount owed as well. So the groceries, how about restaurants and gas? Okay, you can see how that makes a difference. So all of these are added up down here. So what I'm gonna do is just make that bold because that's a total. And then also over here, this total here, I'm gonna make this one bold. Then go ahead and add the number sign to that one as well, like we did before. Just up top in that number section, I'm gonna add the dollar sign. So this is looking pretty good already. Give yourself a pat on the back. If you're watching this along with me and you're like, I think I can do this, you certainly can do this. And if along the way you decide to do this and you're just like, I don't know, you can pause the video, rewind it, 
come back to a place and just work it until you get it. Again, you'll do this to set up your budget this way, but then I'm gonna give you a tip in just a moment on how you can easily create your new month's budget and it's really quick and easy, I promise. So again, here's my total and here's my income. And what I like to do is see the difference between the two. I don't know if you're like me and you just wanna see what you have left over, that's me. So I am gonna go with difference and I like that. And you see it already gives me the formatting of these two just because it's so adjacent to it, but I don't really like that. I'm actually gonna take off the bold and the underline. Okay, next I'm gonna add a formula that subtracts this number from this number to give me what's left. And that is an equals of this number minus this number. And you can see the balance left is 1858.34. I wanna make that bold. And I actually am going to increase the font a little bit too, because if you're following Dave Ramsey, at some point this should be down to zero. So of course there may be some other bills you haven't accounted for. Maybe you need to account for additional gifts. You can add those line items or you can add it in here, what have you. So you know that after your bills are paid, this is how much you have left over. And then you can take that amount and decide to put it towards debt. Did you forget something that you need to add in here and account for? So this is again, like the top level of budgeting, listing out your expenses and your income to see what your difference is. Of course, if this difference is negative, then there are some choices that have to be made as well. That has happened for me before, where I list out everything and I realized I'm using credit cards to make it by. I need to cut out some things. So I started to cut out cable. I started to cut out some other expenditures, really lean up some of these other budget line items just to make sure I could afford all of my expenses with my income. One other thing that I like to do with this, I mentioned that I like to align my bills due by my paychecks. So what I do is simply color code this based on what comes out of what paycheck. So I get paid on October 4th and 18th. So up to the 4th, that would come out of one paycheck. So then I just highlight all of these. We'll scroll you up here. I'm gonna highlight all of those and just make that yellow. So all of these will come out of the same paycheck and anything that happened before, right? So this is just starting in October, but in September, that last paycheck in September would need to cover these because I don't get paid again until October 4th. So hopefully that makes sense. So between the 4th and the 18th, so on the 4th and up to the 18th, so between the 4th and the 17th, I can pay some more bills. These will come out of the 4th check. I'm going to color those a different color. And then on the 18th, I get paid. So these bills will get paid on that day. So you don't have to color code this this way if you don't feel like it. But for me, it helps to see just what needs to be paid in that pay period. And then if I have anything extra, I know within that pay period, I can allot that to some of the others down here or in the event that within that pay period, there's a higher amount than what my paycheck is for that pay period, then I can look ahead and see in this pay period, I'll need to pay some of the bills because in the next pay period, I'll overextend myself if I don't plan ahead. So this is not even just for the month. Normally in October, I'll have planned out for November at least, sometimes December, but that's how this helps. So because for me, these aren't typically specific to a certain pay period, I don't highlight them the same. I may make them just a nice, pretty blue color or something right there. And then I actually add a few formulas down here. You don't have to do this if this is not your deal, but what I like to do is just check in on this week over week 
and just see how I'm doing with this. Over here, I list out how much of this I have spent, and then the difference is here. So say, normally I'll pay my tithes all at one time. So then say that's 405, the groceries, by mid-month may be about half. Of course, you will list out real numbers, but for the sake of this video, I'll add these numbers. And then this is just a difference between the two, so you know how much you have left. So this equals the difference between this minus this, okay? And so because that's 405 and this is 405, there's no difference. What I'm gonna do is just, I select it in this field, go to this lower right corner where you get these crossbars, and then you're gonna hold and drag this down, and it's gonna copy that formula down. Of course, you can also enter that formula into each one of those fields, but this is just a quick, easy way to avoid having to do that. And so you can see that 225 minus 102 is 123. That's how much I have left in my groceries budget, 200 minus 100, so on and so forth. So let me clean this up just a little bit before we move on. Okay, so this looks pretty neat. Now, as promised, I told you I would show you how you can quickly make a new budget for the next month. You don't have to go through and do this every time, and I'm gonna show that to you now. So if you watch my debt snowball update videos, you probably already know what I'm about to do. If I can avoid doing some of the same work over and over, that's what I'm gonna go with. And so what you'll do here is go down to October down here. You're gonna right click, move or copy. And this says, you're gonna move the selected sheet before this sheet. And so we're gonna move it to the end because we want it after October. If you happen to want your latest month or your current month at the beginning, you can actually move it to before your beginning sheet, your first sheet. I'm actually gonna put it at the end. So you'll select move to end and create a copy. You'll select okay and it has created an October 2. And we're just going to update this for November. Okay, so I just double clicked there and I'm relabeling that November. My pay periods are November 1st, 15th, 29th. All right, three in the month. And then you can make all the other updates. So between the 1st and the 15th is a pay period. So I'm going to re-highlight that between the 16th and the 28th and color that and there you have it this is really quick you can go in here and change the dates sometimes i don't know the dates of say my duke energy bill or my piedmont bill but i may know the date of the cooper that's 11 one this may be 11 one you can quickly go in and adjust those and there you go you can update your income over here and everything's in place you can just make any deletions that you want to make your november budget is done that quickly if you have any birthdays you can add that anniversary any other special gig special to the month we're starting the holiday season so you may want to add those things if you're thinking of picking up a part-time job during the holidays you can add that for salary but you see how easy and quick it was to add in november and then again you'll go from there just add December and keep going. I keep saying it's easy, but you see what we did here. After you get it set up, it's really easy just to add another month, make any adjustments you need to make and go from there. Again, feel free to follow this video. You can always pause it, rewind it, work with your own workbook and worksheets, come back to it. This video is out here in YouTube land. So if you ever need to come back to it, feel free. If you have any suggestions for updates that I should make, I am willing to learn. So make sure to share those with me in the comments. Let me know if you decide to go with this layout. I'm really interested to know. And thank you so much for watching. I hope if you didn't realize before that you realize how much more you can do and how great Excel is, it really aims to help us out and it does a lot of mathematical functions for us that we don't have to do ourselves. So hopefully 
This will instill a new confidence. If you didn't have it before, some of you are gurus already, but if you didn't have the confidence before, you realize that you can certainly do this. And maybe this is something you'll pick up doing month over month. This is a spreadsheet that I use every time I'm scheduling my bills. I look at it just about every day. I want to make sure that I account for everything that's coming in and going out. And so hopefully it's as helpful for you as it has been for me. Of course, leave any feedback whatsoever in the comments. If you've made it all the way to the end of this video and haven't yet hit that subscribe button and notification bell, please take the opportunity to do that on your way out. And if you are one of my subscribers, thank you so much for returning. I really, really appreciate you and I'll see you next time. Bye.